Hello everyone and welcome to Occupy Pro Wrestling, the podcast more glorious than NXT's Bobby Roode. I'm Alex Smiley with your weekly look at all the great things happening in pro wrestling, as well as a fun chat with fellow wrestling fans to talk about why we love the business. A lot's happened since the last episode of this podcast, but I am super excited to be back in the swing of things. This past May I got to go to my very first Lucha Underground taping, which as Dario Cueto would say, was a very unique opportunity. My friend Mike Sorg was in the area, and he and I not only got to go to the tapings, but got the VIP treatment thanks to our friend Chris Joseph, who happens to be one of the executive producers of the show. Big thanks to Chris and the Lucha Underground crew for their hospitality. Greatly appreciated getting to wear my Lucha Temple shirt during the tapings, and for the free bagel bites and drinks. Thanks again, guys. It was also a lot of fun hanging out with Sorg that weekend. Not only for the wrestling, but for figuring stuff like the Lyft app out for the very first time. I had a fun chat with Sorg the night before the taping, which I'm really excited to finally be sharing with you all. But before we do that, here's the latest from our site partners. I'm excited to announce two new partners for the site. First up is WhatAManeuver.net, featuring some great wrestling and music-related t-shirts. The other is Keyboard Warriors, a web series that recently began production. You can find more information on that on their Facebook page. Deshaun's Two Cents has been keeping pretty busy with reviews and interviews alike both in and out of the hot tub. Recent interviews include Donovan Dijak and Thunder Rosa, so be sure to check out the Deshaun's Two Cents YouTube channel for the latest. The MFX podcast rolls on with more alternative audio from as recently as SummerSlam, plus all the usual fun MFX shenanigans. Check them out at mfxpodcast.com. The Wrestling Mayhem Show has been on fire lately with their weekly video podcast, along with Indie Mayhem Show and their wrap-up shows for Raw and the Midweek War, which covers Impact, NXT, and Lucha Underground. Be sure to check out the latest at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and tune in live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern. A lot has happened since the last episode of this podcast. A lot of wrestling and a lot of wrestling-related media. Here's just some of the stuff that I've been keeping an eye on. I've recently finished the book Titan Screwed, Lost, Smiles, Stunners, and Screwjobs by James Dixon and Justin Henry, authors of Titan Sinking and Titan Shattered. This particular book took a look at the year 1997 in both WWF, WCW, and even ECW. I highly recommend it for anyone interested in getting a better look at that particular year. And be sure to check out the first two books as they cover 95 and 96, respectively. All three books can be found in the Amazon Kindle store. I've also been listening to a lot of great podcasts lately. Stuff from Chris Jericho, Steve Austin, Jim Roth, Cole Cabana. A lot of fun. But if you're looking for something different, check out my friends at On This Very Screen. They go through the library of WWE Studios, talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Be sure to check them out at onthisveryscreen.com. One of my favorite local indie promotions is Orange County Championship Wrestling. They recently had a show this past Saturday, and have been doing a lot more social media and videos on YouTube. Be sure to check them out on Facebook for more information. Before WWE introduced Hell in a Cell to the world, Georgia Championship Wrestling featured an enclosed steel cage match between Tommy Rich and Buzz Sawyer back in 1983 in what was known as the Last Battle of Atlanta. For years, no solid footage of the match could be found, but WWE has found it, and you can now watch it on the WWE Network. The match itself is pretty hard-hitting, and you get a sense of where Hell in a Cell was inspired by this grueling affair. Be sure to watch the full match on the network, where you can also see the immediate fallout from a pre-match stipulation that involves one of the Andersons and a younger Paul Ellering. And now for this week's interview. Back in May, I got to hang out with a friend of mine from Pittsburgh as we got ready to watch a Lucha Underground taping. That friend is Mike Sorg, a.k.a. Sorgatron. The night before the taping, we had a very fun chat about what got him into wrestling, why he started the Wrestling Mayhem show, and some of the fun stats and analytics that you can do with a pro wrestling show. Enjoy. Live from the studio. Apartment. apartment. Somewhere in Los Angeles. Somewhere in Los Angeles. I don't think this is the neighborhood I thought it was supposed to be. 
It, uh, it's the closest to the neighborhood that we were trying to get to. Mm-hmm. It's close enough. It's close enough. We're walking distance to the place we're trying to get to. That's super secret and, you know, underground, you could say. And, uh, you know, uh, that's cool. Whole lot of fighting going on. Alex, it's good to be here with you in person. <laughs> meeting, yeah. Meeting you for the first time after we've done all, so many podcasts and, and business together and, and this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, everyone. This is Alex Smiley. I'm here with Podcast Extraordinaire, founder and proprietor of Sorgatron Media Incorporated, uh, and video production magician, wizard, over with IWC and RWA out in Pittsburgh, uh, right. Michael Sorg, a.k.a. Sorgatron. That's How you doing, Sorg? That's me. I'm doing very well. I'm... I'm Recovering from traveling across the country to be here. <laughs> like longest distance to do a podcast interview. Because that's completely the only reason I'm in Los Angeles. Of course. Completely. Of course. That's why you're going to be in Chicago in a month. No. <laughs> Have to remember to send that message out to him so that way he can expect you. Uh, no. Uh, all right. So. I need to look at my itinerary again. Where am I going now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got a few few basic questions. We'll kind of go from there. Uh, first one might sound familiar to you. Uh, what got you into wrestling? Whether that's uh, your first memory of wrestling. Ooh, well, the earliest memory I have is uh, the big blue cage, uh, Paul Orndorff and Hulk Hogan, Saturday Night's Made Event, the one where they both landed at the same time when we had to start it over. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> and, and again, I don't know if it's the first one. Or anything like that, but it just Hulk Hogan just like was the coolest freaking thing ever. I was, you know, I would rent the tapes and just do the Hulkamania pose at the end. And that was basically the reason I rented all of them all the time was to get to that point. And it was just the characters and and I don't know, I just was completely in, in, enveloped in the entire thing and never Okay, I had a little bit of a hiatus in my high school years because I discovered girls. But um, <laughs> other than that, uh, I've just been, you know, with it ever since. Nice. Nice. It's funny you bring up the cages. I was thinking about that. Uh, I was looking at, like, a brief history of the cage match. Funny funny thing. Apparently, uh, cage matches used to be more like the Steel Link cage matches that we see today. And then they, at some point, decided... Uh, we're going to build jungle gyms. Well, that Ooh. was WrestleMania 2, if mm-hmm. I recall, mm-hmm. uh, because the whole point was King Kong Bundy couldn't climb the cage, so the blue bars were a reinforced cage. Mm-hmm. Also, one that didn't actually hurt everybody, like yeah. Chain Link did, because like, mm-hmm. like, it was actually kind of dangerous for Superfly to be on the top of that cage, because it was the ends of the fencing and his bare feet, you know? Like, yeah. that, was, that was pretty for real. Yeah, it's like if you've ever tried to jump off a a, a fence, mm-hmm. it's basically like that. Only they're cornered off. Right, and now if you see some indie cages, they're just about as dangerous. Yeah, I've seen some indie cages. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So, so you've been doing wrestling for quite a while, or you've been watching wrestling for quite a while. Yep. You've uh, been a fan, and uh, kind of want to get into one kind of the meat of this uh you've been podcasting for about 10 years now and that is wrestling mayhem show which started in 2006 i'm kind of curious how that came about well that was a case of um i was doing a fan site at the time called western it was a fan site for the insane clown posse juggalos and um from that, I had discovered, like, Shoutcast Radio. I was working on somebody else's, you know, server or something like that. And we were broadcasting and doing some stuff and maybe talking about wrestling. And I had some friends. And I actually had somebody, even then, from California that was dialing into my server and being a DJ. for DJ Elf, wherever you are these days. I know you popped up on Facebook a little bit ago. But, um, and then the podcasting thing... I heard about from, like, Leo Laporte was somebody that did tech TV, and I watched that because I was like, it's a a technology TV channel. This is so great. And and when that disintegrated, when Comcast bought them, I kind of watched where everybody went. 
and they all went on and did other video properties online or whatever. And and his his turned into this week in tech, and and showed me podcasting and. That seems like the logical next next step to what we're doing with Shoutcast uh, and these and streaming radio. Funny since streaming radio is coming coming back around. Um, and then I was hanging with uh, DJ Lunchbox, uh, Papa Lunchbox on the show, um, and and we were just at a party instead of like whatever debauchery everybody else was into. We we're sitting in the kitchen just sipping on our drinks and talking wrestling. And I was like, this is a good conversation. You want to do it as a podcast, you know, which is kind of how a couple of my podcasts have started under certain topics. So, and that's basically it. We started doing it. He started bringing random friends over, and that became the Chad the Shad and Doc Remedy and so the old steam machine. And and we were just just shouting into microphones every week, and people seemed to want to listen to it. And we, I think, got better at it over a while, and we're still doing it ten years later. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny you bring up like the early stuff because I I did like manage to find it on iTunes. Oh, it's got to be hard ahead. to listen to. Um, it it's kind of was, tough. but it's but the kind of thing. Listen. Yeah, people listen because it was not radio stuff. It was this is for real. Now you have to have a little bit better quality in order to get people's attention. Mm-hmm. I mean, back then. You know, you didn't have everybody and their brother saying, I want to do a podcast and just, you know, BS about wrestling with my friends. And that's all we are, you know, in the long run. I mean, we, I have a little bit of a mission with it, but uh, that we're not just another podcast uh, I, in the style of, of discussions that we have. Because um, I just don't want to sound like everybody else. I want to. I want to have fun. I want to be there because we're having fun and talk about it. And and it's turned into all this other stuff. And I think that's what's made it really interesting. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Because um, I remember I've I've listened to you guys talk. You guys have even kind of talked about it uh, when you guys were starting. It was like there weren't a lot of wrestling podcasts out there. Period. Right. So it's like I think you even mentioned it basically like back in the day. What you would do is, if you searched wrestling podcast on iTunes, WMS would be like one of the first ones to pop up. Right, and that's very much, the early adopter was very much what led to our early and continued, you know, whatever level of success that we have because we were the ones that you found, you know. Um, just like Cole Cabana was the first to, you know, wrestler to, when mm-hmm. you would look for wrestling podcasts, be like, oh, wait, maybe this is a little more for real. And, and it's a very good podcast, but like just being first just counts for so much in this, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I, I, every story was like, oh, I just happened to be on what name service, Stitcher, iTunes, whatever, pod, whatever, you know, from 10 years ago. And um, searched wrestling, and I found the guys. Then found out they were in the same town as me or something, or really liked the conversation and started conversing. And that's mostly our co hosts Nice. Nice. Um, so I was one. Um, so obviously you guys are based out in Pittsburgh, um, and I'm kind of curious what what is the uh, I guess kind of generally what's the Pittsburgh wrestling scene like, and I'm kind of trying to transition that to how you got involved with. Are you interested in currently or back then? Back then. Uh, back then, I probably didn't know too much, but it, it, there is a storied history with. Um, the area is wrestling, of course. Studio wrestling, something that is where is where the Bruno San Martino and, and uh, countless names came from uh, in the area. It was on the local TV, and it was a classic, like thirty people in a studio and we're inside of Rosie and all this stuff. But even through there, there's this other level of it through the '90s and and like Pittsburgh Steel City Wrestling, I think it was called. And as most of the people that I worked with, like that, like the promoter and everything for International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, were from them and PWX Pro Wrestling Express, which used to be NW, it was NWA East at the time, mm. actually, um, and left their affiliation at some point. Um, I mean, they've been around for like twenty years, so it's this weird like like these indies were around, but nothing crazy and significant that stuck out except for the IWC, and how I discovered them actually was one flipping through and I kind of like found them on TV and it was on this, um, you know, not cable access, but it's one of those networks where like, yeah, you paid for your hour basically, I mm. think 
with them, and uh, and they had a show on, which was, and they, I think I saw like a little bit of Super Indie Four when John McChesney was getting his ass kicked by Low Key. Oh wow! And I'm like, this is interesting. It was still, I still wasn't um, sold on going to a show yet until finally I ran into a guy, Jason Gorey. Gorey, he's doing tremendous stuff even today. Um, go look him up. Um, kind of the coolest creepy characters. I think he's when. He's at the right show and they're doing the right thing with, with him. Um, he's one of the best creepy characters, mm. you know, uh, out there. But I ran into him at a dope show at the Rex Theater of all places mm-hmm. down in Southside. You may have heard of the Southside and Carson Street with uh, Corey Graves. Mm. Uh, these days, yeah. whenever, Lo- uh, sorry, not Logan Chulo, uh, the Drifter <laughs> comes out on NXT. This is where we're, t- that's where I, that's where my, you know, introduction. I ran into him. He's wearing a two dope f off shirt because he's a juggalo too and knows me from that site. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I don't know if we can swear on this one, uh, but uh, uh, and he's like, he's like, oh yeah, you're a sore. You do this, 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 and it's like, yeah, yeah, what's up? And he's like, he's like, you should completely come out to CIWC. So finally, and this is the same year mostly that I grabbed, I, I started the podcast. Um, I grabbed Chachi and we went to a show. And the next month I grabbed the rest of the guys and we went to the show and we were hooked. One of the guys became a wrestler, you know, went and trained him <laughs> for a few years, you know. And and from there, we were just, I, it just didn't stop with me. And then I was around, we started interviewing these guys and and they were like, oh, you do website stuff? Yeah, yeah, you need him. Oh, you do websites or video stuff? Yeah, sure. Um, and I was, my day job was video editing, you know, so it was like, and yeah. I got the new camera at ringside and that led to a lot of opportunities. And that's how I got in the door there. And after a few years, the guy left and I was like, yeah, I'll take over. <laughs> and that became a big cornerstone of actually building my own company, mm-hmm. you know, was we get to do this stuff over here. And hey, that actually begot doing some talking about the stuff we did over there which we got the the gig that mm-hmm. puts me here in los angeles <laughs> talking to you right now <laughs> so very much i can say that everything that i have in personal and business is because i started a podcast about wrestling 10 years ago wow like like me sitting here right now mm-hmm. which has nothing to do with wrestling why i'm why i'm in los angeles to begin with right has everything to do with wrestling and podcasting in the long run that's very awesome. Um, so you, okay, so so you mentioned how you got involved with uh, IWC. You also have been involved with RWA, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, out right. in West Newton. I'm kind of I was I'm especially curious about that because like that seems a little bit like it's just I feel like from what I've seen of it, it's a much different experience. Right, and, and like I said I, I didn't really get too much into it, but it's a very crowded right now in Pittsburgh. And it was back then too, because there at the time when I was getting into IWC, there was Far North Wrestling, which actually was run by Corey Graves' dad, okay. certainly, certainly James Keenan's dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never got to attend that, but a lot of guys, uh, that, that was a big history there as well. Um, and uh, and then of course PWX was running as well, so, and KSWA I think is like always running. That's got like Lord Zoltan. It's mm-hmm. actually in the city and everything. This is the Greater Pittsburgh area mostly. Now today you have International Wrestling Cartel. You have this Code Red Wrestling. It's running out of a mall. God mm-hmm. bless them. It's a fun freaking show, but it's one of those low rent kind of shows, right? Right. Uh, and we don't and we need another uh, another promotion like a hole in the head in the area. To be quite honest, <laughs> PWX still runs out of McKeesport. Um, RWA and West Newton and all those that I just mentioned are in like a greater 10 mile radius of each other it's ridiculous mm-hmm. and how much of over- overlap is, is there it, it, it's crazy overlap plus then there's KSWA in the city uh, that doesn't do any video although there's a guy a really cool guy that I actually did a project with back in the day it's a whole other story mm-hmm. uh, that is helping them try and do some online presence kind okay. of stuff cool. um, and then all the way down in Connellsville there's Fish's Outcast Wrestling mm. um, and was there another one is it there was there's been a couple like about hours of an hour away that have come and gone but other than that now we're gonna get wrestling alliance you want to know why i'm involved with them or like yeah i want to know how that came about because well because i don't think i've heard that i've i've heard the iwc stuff yeah a couple times now but i've never really i don't think i've really heard the rwa story let me give you a podcast exclusive here because i don't talk about this with a lot of people exactly (laughs) how that happened 
Um, well, honestly, the reason I work with them now is because to, the, the guy that I was working for mm -hmm. had them on as a client. So oh, okay. when he, when he, that's really in the long short of it is, we'll just say I got re-involved um, right. at that point. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was just part of that. And it's always over the years, it's been like, oh, what is this stuff these guys are doing? You know, I mean, Feel Bad's not a, you know, seasoned promoter. He was a fan. You know, him mm -hmm. and Wheels and all those guys were in the front row all the time at IWC. And that's why everybody gets, I think, in the in the community there, the wrestling community, the pro wrestlers or, or, or whatever the hell you want to call it, mm -hmm. are like, you know, what the hell does he know about promoting? He's a fan, you know? I'm like, well, the guy now was, wasn't even there. It wasn't even there as long as Feel Bad's been around. Uh, the guy before him was the announcer. What the hell does he know? Blah, 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 blah. And, and all these guys have mm -hmm. been around and talked to the people and learned from the people who have done it before. So I, I don't think anybody should be knocked on any of that stuff. Um, and I'm not getting into because I don't really know, but supposedly some people think that other people have done certain things, and and it's right one know, of those the things. It's like it's the politics of, and, and I've had other wrestlers on, on on the Indie Mayhem show saying the same thing. Like the politics of indie wrestling is so grandiose, even though it's this piddly little s stuff, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like everybody's everybody's. Uh, uh, fighting for these weird scraps because nobody's making a giant chunk of change off of this because it's indie wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. Sure, PWG is, but they got a pretty interesting thing going on here. But still, um, aside from that whole yeah, yeah, rant, yeah. right? <laughs> um, they actually, and I think they they they're they're coming into their own. They're figuring out their identity, and they're figuring out an identity that people outside of West Newton, this crappy little gymnasium. And these people that come every month, which is an amazing crowd because they mm -hmm. love everything and they're just mm -hmm. into it and I think still believe, damn it. Yeah. Um, but then we, we get Sanjay Dutt and Amazing Red and Gory and G Raver and, and these guys coming in and Matt Hardy comes in and, yeah. and the Patriots with them now. Okay, we'll just roll that back. But uh, <laughs> as, nothing as, against the Patriot, but he's kind of like an old no, guy right, 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 Sanjay right. Dutt or something. Yeah, no, know? I was going to say the first time I saw, uh, I saw a thing, from, and this was back when I was designing the, the covers for a little bit. I remember, like, the first time he said, oh, uh, Matt Hardy's in a match at RWU. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, that was a bit of an upgrade. Oh, like that? Oh, oh, and good. then, like, a couple months later, it was like, oh, yeah, uh, Sanjay Jett's over in Yeah, yeah. In Sanjay died, uh, no big deal. BJ Whitmer. Well, it's a big deal. BJ Whitmer shows up unannounced. Um, <laughs> uh, what was the other one around then? Uh, you know, just, just like... Bruce Pitchard's just mm -hmm. kind of hanging mm -hmm. out, you mm -hmm. know, because there were doing a, there was a thing that was happening mm -hmm. that I don't know if anybody will ever see. Um, and then, like, you have your couple, like, Salute to the Troops right. shows, which at the very least have some very interesting kind of stories going on in them. Uh, right, I think right. That's, and it was for a good cause. You know, they raised yeah. money for, for um, these, these, these foundations for troops, these veterans foundations in the area. And it was something different. They tried something. You can't fault them for that. Um, yeah. And especially, again, he was a fan that wanted to get into wrestling. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, like early in a wrestling mayhem show, like we were backyard wrestlers and we kind of mm -hmm. used the show and we cut promos on each other and we wrestled in my dad's backyard and stuff, you know, <laughs> in our, in our mid 20s and mm -hmm. still. And, 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 and that became a thing. And, and some of us trained, some of us tried, some of us didn't, you know. Yeah. And uh, part of that was at the time when we were doing the backyard stuff was was feel bad as crew and we were all doing backyard stuff but he actually would like get a gymnasium and a ring from somebody and we did it there and we mm -hmm. had these very weird loose bookings and mm -hmm. like and we had some fun and like there's people that i quote finger wrestled that are wrestlers now mm -hmm. you know what i mean and that, that's cool not anybody that's yeah. like really done a whole bunch but you know people that are still around the area and doing stuff that's cool you know um and actually, and this is the exclusive part, because again, I have never said this out to anywhere else, but um, um, the early, early, early makings of Renegade, what became Renegade Wrestling Alliance, like we were partners on it. I was, it, it, my wife was drawing up the papers on it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. like, like, and then something happened we disagreed on something and we walked away from it and said, we don't, we're not having anything to do with this. You know, it was nothing. Mm -hmm. It was a stupid misunderstanding to be quite honest. Um, that pissed us off and we kind of rolled on to, you know, to find, you know, this isn't, this is too much than we're worth, worth doing. And they kept doing stuff and we came back around just because I was working for somebody else. And then it came back around to like, well, yeah, okay, we're, we're cool. You know, 
everybody's going to help each other out here and you know not in the same roles we were before or anything like that they're a mm -hmm. client of mine you know and we do video for them and whatever but um but still it's like a really weird thing how that came back around and they are i think you can say a significant you know thing in the area that they're i mean they're bringing in people they're breaking their own records you know um they're putting on good matches and these stories and everything like that. They're not IWC. If you're into pro wrestling gorilla, Chikara, you're, this is not for you. And they're very old school in their booking. So if you're looking for that, I think that they have something for you. Mm -hmm. But again, they're not super indie. They're not, they're not, you know, international wrestling cartel. They're not all this other stuff. You know, they're not Ring of Honor or wannabes or anything like mm -hmm. that. Like, a lot of these groups are that if anything they're uh, they're old school wrestling wannabes for for a bit but then they mm -hmm. have a lot of new stuff too so I don't know it, 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 I, I, I get the impression they're the kind of wrestling that you go to you enjoy yourself for a couple hours oh yeah with some great like old school stuff where I like especially like in some cases even something like you know faces and heels maybe a little bit more clearly defined because sometimes in some of the other indie Things you see stuff where everyone's trying to get moves in and stuff and yeah I mean I mean other than I mean there, there will be a couple of matches on the card where it's like let's see what this guy can do mm -hmm. and also great because they bring in people from different areas like there's mm -hmm. people coming from the Carolinas and Ohio and stuff that don't go to IWC on a regular basis yeah and and like so it is something different and I think that's that is significant as well um no, and between all that, all those different mixes, and just and everybody there, um, everybody there that, that at least we work with directly, one are pretty much friends, and, and just you know, aren't um, aren't uh, uh, they don't have their they don't have their heads up their asses like a lot of promoters do. Mm -hmm. You know, I think feel bad gets a little interesting sometimes, but he kind of has to play that promoter game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but, um, but hey, he's out there, you know, glad him with the fans and everything. And he's, you know, uh, he, uh, I think a lot of promotions need to remember they're in the customer service business, mm. you know, and not like putting stuff in the ring and don't understand why the fans uh, aren't getting the thing they're doing. It's like, well, no, you got to either attract the right fans or serve the fans you have. And, and it's uh, like I keep saying, it's family down there, you know. And and mm -hmm. and, and it's it, it's a good vibe. Everybody feels like they're a part of something, whether they're buying a ticket or they're helping with the ring or whatever, you know, or or, or tickets or whatever. Um, and and that's not a knock against anybody else. It's just a different vibe. And mm -hmm. It works for them really well. Oh yeah, definitely. It it actually reminds me a little bit of uh, I was telling you before about a promotion. I did a little bit of stuff with. Mm -hmm. Orange County, uh, Orange County Championship Wrestling, we, uh, kind of a similar deal. I love, like personally, I love some of these really small local indies where you get like, you get everyone packed into a smaller thing, and it's like, it's more of a family thing too. Yeah, which has always been nice. Yeah, like I just like I love the the intimate atmosphere of that kind of thing, yeah. and I kind of got that sense too of like the one time I went to PWG and Reseda. But it's like it's a way different experience when you don't necessarily have everyone's like a young adult, you know, eighteen, twenty five or whatever. And you've you know, you've got families there, you've got kids that are cheering and booing as you know, as they as they go. Just do you, like stuff like that I just love seeing because like wrestling, you know, mm -hmm. I think should be for everybody. And when you get an atmosphere like that, and I've seen it with little bits here and there at RWA even yeah, I, like, I don't know about he gets the, stuff like that. I don't know about the family atmosphere because it gets a little raunchy sometimes. Right, and right. And everything, but um, well, I believe uh, I blame Jock, Jock Simpson on that one. But uh, that's he's been gone from that for a while. Ah, but, well, uh, see. Uh, but you know, I think it's probably part of that back in the day. But um, they just they're just a little looser with what they can say there, and okay, you know, yeah. And I think that, yes, I don't want to like say a parenting comment, but I think the people that bring their kids to that show aren't parents that are terribly concerned about the language that their kids are hearing. 
mm. you know? So Yeah, no, I got you. And, and, they, and it's not, it's just, no, yeah, they're yeah. not, because they keep coming back, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and nobody's getting offended and not coming back yeah. from what's happening there. They're like, yeah. they're like no, I think it's Still, fun. it kind of comes yeah. back to the whole uh, intimate mm-hmm. atmosphere. But the, by the atmosphere, families, you know, one thing that struck me, um, so we were in, we were in Erie, um, which is not too far from Pittsburgh, like two hours away from Pittsburgh. And I was like, let's go out there and do I was actually we we're doing I think it was our ten year anniversary and we decided let's actually do something for our anniversary. Mm. Um, my wife and I. And we're up there and we ran into a friend that we know from social media and pod camp and a bunch of other stuff had nothing to do with wrestling. And, and it turns out, well, I knew this, and he's friends with the guy that I used to do the juggalo site with, mm. who's, and they're both friends with John McChesney. Mm. Okay. You know, that I saw on TV with Loki yep. how many years before. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, and, and you know, and we, so, you know, we're, we we're all, you know, kind of distant friends and everything from all that stuff. But, um, so we go, we're up there and we, we run into him, have to run into him. Like, I was like, you know, and, uh, he's like, he's like, you know, there's a match tonight, John, John's wrestling. And I was like, oh, okay. But, like the promotion that's up here. He's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, and I've heard about it. I did, I did some filming with them, um, a few years before. Uh, so we go, it's a pro wrestling rampage in Erie, right? And, and and again, kind of well, those at this Shriners Hall, and kind of smaller and everything like that. But I, I, there was a row of like eight year old girls, maybe, in the row in front of us, just into the wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, no boys around, or anything mm-hmm. like that. There's mm-hmm. like a group of young girls into mm-hmm. wrestling, and that's mm-hmm. cool, you know? Mm-hmm. And. I can't remember, recall that there was like a lot of like women's wrestling on there, you know, I think there's a lot of arm candy maybe on the show, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but still they were into it. And that, and that's, that's so cool to see, you know, it's a spectacle yeah. regardless of how big it is. It's still big to somebody. Yeah. All right. Um, so kind of going back to, to the podcasting stuff. Uh, so I want, I. Uh, because I, I remember listening, I think I started listening to Wrestling Mayhem Show around 2012-ish, or I think. And, okay. I've, and I've always joked that I can either thank or blame Riz for that one. Uh, yeah, our, our friend Riz, also from Pittsburgh, uh, that I've known for like a few years now myself. But uh, When's he going to get his ass out here to L.A. to be honest? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to that conversation. There's stuff to talk about on that one, but uh, yeah, no. Uh, so when I started listening to WMS, it was you know it was interesting to hear like the occasional like interview with you know different wrestlers and stuff. And I remember, uh, I'm trying. To, I don't remember what episode it was, but I remember when the announcement was made about uh, doing the Indie Mayhem show, which focused a lot more on the actual independent pro wrestling scene and. And all that. So I was kind of curious about where the idea to kind of spin that off and how things have been going with that. Because the people that want to hear us talk about John Cena that want to hear us don't give a crap about Pittsburgh wrestlers. Mm. So I want to serve everybody. Mm-hmm. I don't want ha- I don't I don't want people to have a two hour podcast and this small group is interested in this over here. Um, the larger group is this like somebody skipping part of the podcast. It was just disjointed. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had a, for a bit, you know, Eamon, our buddy in San Antonio, mm-hmm. voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling now, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. growing up our baby boy. Um, Good old wrestle fan. Yep. He, uh, so we had him, since he's been the guy that follows all this indie stuff, he discovered and went wild with the stuff. And um, we had him doing the Indie Minute. I was like, what? Another, another good running gag. All right. All right, Eamon. You've got a minute. Right. But... That turned into everybody was kind of running down. You had a minute or whatever. But, uh, but the frankly, running gags are my favorite. Well, frankly, and so we're using Google mm-hmm. Hangout, mm-hmm. and I'm watching the expressions even on the co-host face. I'm like, they don't give a crap about what's happening right now. If they don't give a crap, and they're expressing that vocally too, then that's like this deserves some discussion. Mm-hmm. Like that's something that Eamon and I are passionate about when mm-hmm. everybody else doesn't give a crap, even mm-hmm. on the show. And we all like different wrestling. There's stuff mm-hmm. that I don't watch. I haven't watched Impact, like a full episode of Impact. And I don't know how many years, right? Yeah. Okay, it's not like it's a pleasure tour for the guys doing the midweek forum. It's, like, it's like now they begrudgingly talk about TNA. But still, but still. And there's, yeah. I mean, 
That's a whole other discussion. Right. Um, but, but again, and even I'm struggling to catch up on Lucha Underground. I can't mm. watch this. You know, these guys are mm. loving this stuff over mm. here, you know. Um, and I think, you know, Eamon and I, you know, being fairly embedded at the time, <laughs> still are with, with indie wrestling, um, and why we're into it as people that are doing stuff around it, you know, I wanted something... I wanted to concentrate on the interviews and concentrate on indie wrestling. Mm -hmm. Um, It felt like it needed a separation because it is two different topics. And now we can talk about WWE and all the mainstream stuff and maybe people will be attracted to that. And then here's this stuff over here. Um, It's very... And again, nothing's making crazy, crazy, crazy numbers or anything like that. But um, there's a buzz amongst the communities at least we're touching with the Indie Mayhem show. Right. Like, I think Eamon has this as well. I know I see tweets from the guys that he's associated with, but I know I go to wrestling shows and I have the guys coming up to me saying when I'm going to be on. Mm -hmm. I have the guys coming up to me and say, I heard you talk to this guy. You know, so, and again, it worked because I always was worried about having guys on locally because again, we're talking about whatever. Why do I care about these Pittsburgh guys? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and what were our interviews for the longest time? Super Hentai, the game, the interviews, Jimmy DeMarco. Mm-hmm. Those are my favorite interviews. Great stuff. Why does somebody in California care about Super Hentai? Right. Unless they're like that big of a wrestling fan. You know, like it's right. like a niche and a niche and a niche. Mm-hmm. So let's put that over here for those people that do want this. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while, through fate and just how things worked out we got big stuff because one it's the people that we have run into we get Zima Ion, we get Zach Callen we get geez who else big up we end up talking to Krista Joseph of Lucha mm-hmm. Underground mm-hmm. Uh, I talked to Les Thatcher a couple weeks ago you know that was a fun interview it was a like, great interview I could have let him go for two hours but I'm like I can't do that I can't do that I can't do that <laughs> Because uh, I want, yeah. I want to come back. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, I I, I missed it somehow because I I do uh, I do recaps on SmackDown, mm-hmm. and I don't know how I missed it, but someone tweeted had tweeted about it after the fact that uh, Liz Thatcher got a uh, uh, a name drop by Maro. Oh, nice. On on, on SmackDown, I was like, See? dang. And here's this guy I was having a 45 minute chat mm-hmm. with. We randomly talked about politics, and mm-hmm. I don't talk about politics with anybody. You know? And various other analogies of wrestling. Yeah, very interesting, very curious, <laughs> very curious. But like that, and that's I think that's one of the coolest things happening. And, and I think um, it worked. And just separate that. And and email this guy I know we can I can talk to every week. You know, he's a guy that if I was at a party and we would just he's you know we were at a party and we just end up talking about indie wrestling mm-hmm. forever. You know, mm-hmm. as it as it is. After we go off the air and I cut the stream, is like, so what's up with the uh, you guys down there? You know, mm-hmm. and we're mm-hmm. talking about like, you know, the weird things that we're dealing with that we can't talk about on air because mm-hmm. you know you don't want to reveal certain weird political things you have to deal with. Yeah, you know, and, and and again, it's kind of like that's we have this vibe because we both see this thing mm-hmm. from this mm-hmm. other angle. Yeah, as people not in the ring but involved in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want to like go in the show. I never want to go in the show saying I know exactly how wrestling works. I know how it should be. I know I have all the answers. I still want to look at it as a fan, mm-hmm. but I, I I have to recognize that I'm kind of how do I put this? Like a super fan? Like I'm mm-hmm. not like a guy sitting there watching SmackDown and commentating on it. It's like well, no, I'm actually involved. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not doing the big stuff but I'm doing significant stuff over here mm-hmm. you know he's calling wrestling matches with a Chris Hero and a Ray Rowe and stuff yeah. I'm film. I've been filming matches of ringside mm-hmm. and otherwise and talking with these guys about getting spots and everything for five different promotions mm-hmm. six per different promotions mm-hmm. since 2007 yeah the, I, I've like, you know how many people on TV right now that I've worked with? You know, like mm-hmm. that's, you know, and, and, and not, I'm trying not to be, you know, too narrow and horn on there or anything. It's mm-hmm. just, I, I think that's a weight in saying, hey, here's two guys that don't, that aren't just armchair recording backing this thing. They have something to say. Yeah. And mostly it's a positive, we love indie wrestling and you should too. Mm-hmm. Um, 
on that side. And and mm-hmm. that's the Mayhem show. I try to keep in the positive as well. And try oh, yeah. to keep in the, we're fans, da 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 Like, I try to cap it when somebody's like, what's up, we should be doing this. It's like, who are you to dictate what they should be doing, you know? Yeah. Why don't you just watch the... Uh, Watch the storyline, what you think of it, and and don't don't say I don't like it because it's gonna end up being X. It's like right. you don't know what it's gonna end up doing. They don't know what's gonna end up be, being half right. The time. Right. I mean, which is why you see some of the stuff you do. Yeah. Have you read interviews after some of these guys leave and stuff? Like they're like, yeah, we didn't know what was gonna happen. Yeah, we mm-hmm. didn't know what we were gonna do next week on that thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that guy got hurt and that kind of screwed things up and it got weird and then it got awesome for some reason. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, they're. And, and, and recognizing that and we get in these discussions and I double advocate be like you realize how freaking hard it probably is like I know people where there's three people trying to book a show for 12 times a year and their their minds are just completely rattled yeah they're doing three hours a week you know mm-hmm. five nine hours a week like and they're so big and compartmentalized and you're yeah. going to be like oh that wasn't the perfect show it's not it's not 1993. The USA Network with Up All Night After You and we got Yokozuna Undertaker riding, um, fighting jobbers in mm-hmm. a small Poughkeepsie arena. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know, I'm going on a whole other sort of thing. But, um, but still, I know we can have certain discussions that will get more attention, but um, Justin Labar is doing that, and he's doing a great job with it. Mm-hmm. We're not Justin Labar. We're yeah. not Chair Shot Reality. That's mm-hmm. what they do, mm-hmm. you know. And I and and I've I've worked with him in wrestling and on you know with the show and everything, and and he's got that. I'm 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 trying to find this niche in this version of the discussion over here that mm-hmm. the rest of us like or, or this other section of us are happening mm-hmm. is happening that that you know feel you know not. Not dirt cheaty, but I don't want to because I feel like that's putting down what what Russell Zone and, and the what bars of the world do. But but like that general discussion, because mm-hmm. I get tired of it. Yeah, you know, and I don't know. I just I just hope we put our own voice in it mm-hmm. enough. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, apparently because people listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> they're there. Responding. I was gonna say it's like there. You know, you mentioned you know there's certain topics of discussion I want to do. Yeah. And like that we're you know that you're hoping that people will listen to and yeah, yeah. definitely like I've like because I've seen some of the numbers on that stuff and especially when you clip out certain parts mm-hmm. for the YouTube and those one those clips get some big numbers. Facebook. I. Oh my goodness. I I think I did a little bit of trickery with the SEO on 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 Facebook. Uh huh. So I'm like, oh, I'm just screwing these people up, and they're watching five seconds of going away, and I got a number, right? Uh-huh. But I'm looking at some of them, and there's like 60 likes. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound like a huge number, but that's a huge number. Yeah. Like, that's a huge number. I've never seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. I have um. Because like for for a page that's not like a big verified thing from some we big have organization likes on our page mm-hmm. and a hundred of those came in the last month mm-hmm. it's been at like 400 forever yeah um no something happened I, I started i basically started inputting things differently when i put the videos in facebook um here's a hot tip if you do something where you talk about wrestling hey most of the wrestlers have pages on facebook mm-hmm. when you tag their page somebody's gonna search for john cena guess what they're gonna find you guys talking about john cena I did the numbers, and even, like, something like, like, oh, this this video over here got, like, 2,000 views. I'm like, holy crap. No way they stuck around. It's 20 minutes, right? Too mm-hmm. long a video. Mm-hmm. I'm getting the weird analytics stuff. I'm sorry. That's okay. But I looked you're, at you're, it. You're helping me figure out how to better pre- prepare this post. Do the math. What's really important mm-hmm. when you, you're looking at uh, how your videos are doing are completion, mm-hmm. you know? Or even see how many people got halfway through. That's significant, mm-hmm. too. They mm-hmm. stuck around, right? Mm-hmm. But you say, oh, this is 20 minutes. There's not going to be a lot of completion. I looked at it as a certain percentage. I did the math. I'm like, 42 people completed this 20-minute video about Monday Night Raw this week. Doesn't sound big. Mm-hmm. But 42 people in a room. They don't mm-hmm. fit in this room. Not this Airbnb and north of Boyle Heights in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Um, <laughs> it's significant. Mm-hmm. And when I was doing a rap group, that's a whole other podcast, mm. and we had 42 people in front of us, that was a very good night. Um, <laughs> you know, something's happening there, 
And when I'm seeing the numbers that we're doing compete with my friend that does a very significant and very successful and very nationally known and talked about on on whatever shows after the Tonight Show mm. uh, these days um, by um, Hobbit Guy, the original Hobbit Guy, <laughs> not the guy from Sherlock, uh, that guy. Uh, <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. You, you, you are you talking about James Corden? No, no, what? No, I'm, I'm talking about like the um, original Lord of the Rings Hobbit guy that I can't remember his name right now. Um, Eli Wood. No. Oh, Elijah, Elijah Wood. Wood. Elijah Wood. He's talking about this thing. Oh, okay. And it has this national thing. Their zombies are popping up on Good Morning America, and they're getting X amount on their Facebook. Mm. And I'm seeing our numbers rival them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about the Scare House, by the way. Yes. They got some good stuff over there. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Have I sworn yet? Have I been good about that? <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping track. It's well, you'll, fine. You'll edit it. You'll edit it. Yeah. Fix it in post. You know exactly. how it goes. It's a clean show for the kids. You know, I mean, I think something's happening there. And I don't know if it is the discussion or if we're falling into this interesting thing on Facebook and our latter bars like, yeah, wrestling, because we have that happening over here. And then we have the weird thing where everybody did a watch party at, for The Rock's first match and somebody just called it clickbait. And it's been getting all these thousands of hits and nobody sticks around because they realize this isn't as match as this, you know. And it is kind of a little weird switch, bait and switch. Mm-hmm. Not on purpose. Completely not on purpose. Right. It's like, no, it's a watch party. It says in the title and everybody mm-hmm. finds it because mm-hmm. of the SEO or mm-hmm. whatever. Like, I felt like that's what we were doing. But people are looking at this thing and people are responding to this thing, you know. And that's the weird side thing we do. More people are finding it, I know, because we tag more successful search terms. Yeah. The John Cena, WWE Raw, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, but... That can be translating to, well, maybe they like this, and they, and it's a trickle down, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Like, like getting two thousand hits on this video doesn't mean we have two thousand fans. Yeah, we have two thousand people that stumbled on us. Yep. If you look at how Facebook and how video works, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but either way, a chip, a chip, chip at those two thousand fans, that number of who sticks around keeps coming up keeps coming up keeps coming up until we take over the world <laughs> like, my, like Mark Zuckerberg yep uh, <laughs> to the point where we can afford to give people college scholarships or something <laughs> I don't know what he does what <laughs> I'm sorry I, uh, well you, you mentioned that charity is weird man you, you, you mentioned that and then I remember the beginning of Civil War that I won't spoil because I was thinking about that part of it too where he gave the MIT something something. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The... yeah. Spoiler alert. Um, anyways, everybody's watching by now, I'm sure. This, 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 this isn't going out right This right. isn't Rambling Movie Minute. It'll be on DVD by then, right? Yeah. Right, I think so. No. <laughs> no. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, there's some thoughts about what's going on. <laughs> yeah, no, I got you. No, that's, that's actually, you know, you'd be surprised, like... Yeah, no, it's fun. It's honestly kind of, it's always interesting because everyone's got some kind of thing to talk about. And it's like, everyone's got, like, they're, everyone, there's some kind of target market, some kind of target audience. Yeah, and, and that's, kind of, that's the thing. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. But, but, like, it's you can't just go and say, I'm going to be a wrestling podcast these days. That worked 10 years ago when there weren't many of us. Mm-hmm. Um, now you got to be like, oh, I'm going to do a wrestling podcast. Yeah, okay. And About what? I'm going to listen to you because you're different than everybody else that's doing it because, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. I think what you're finding is like only so many people will tune in just because it's a Stone Cold podcast. What is Stone Cold actually bringing to the table? And, and, and all these guys, like how many, like, you know... I think Goldberg saying, oh, I'm going to do a podcast, but I'm not going to talk about wrestling. I'm going to talk about cars. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a little more significant and different Mm -hmm. because he's not Mm -hmm. really competing with all these other guys. Mm -hmm. But you as a person with a microphone in an Airbnb sitting on a table Mm -hmm. have to have to say, well, I can't be the Wrestling Mayhem show. I can't be WrestleZone. I can't be this, you know, Mm -hmm. what, what, why would people listen to me? What am I bringing to this? Mm -hmm. You can do it. And it's not that it, this is a discussion I just had in my newsletter this week. Sorgatron.com. Go sign up and get a free download. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with 
just doing a podcast and because I want to talk and that's cool to get like 20 people listening but if you're like I actually want to make an impact you're like cool what are you like you actually want to make this good you actually want to make this a thing people like more people care about and tack on than just a kind of a hobby thing you're doing mm -hmm. it's still kind of considered a hobby because let's be mm -hmm. honest there's no money um, you know not unless you get sponsors speaking of sponsors let me tell you about no just oh dot com. that's WS whatever.com <laughs> for you <laughs> nice shirt, by the way. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, so no, you you need to be like I yeah. want to talk about wrestling, but like the guys that are like was the, the one guy that's explaining Attitude Era stories to their friend that never watched the Attitude Era. Oh my goodness! I, I listen to that. Tremendous. Um, you know, like a weird angle. Like let's do the mm -hmm. thing because um, I've never watched Old South Wrestling, and mm -hmm. we're gonna watch mm -hmm. Old South Wrestling and talk about mm -hmm. it. Uh, you know, I've never witnessed Chikara. Let's go dig up some Chikara season one stuff and see what happens. You mm -hmm. know, because mm -hmm. I'm a guy that loved ECW, and let's see how I like it. You know, yeah. Um, like 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 things like that are just there's, there's so much to do, especially with the network and everything and indie wrestling and nobody's touched on. You know, I mean, yeah. Jeez, and I think I'm now I'm brainstorming now out loud, like, you know what we should we should really be doing? I should be getting somebody who's never watched any of this stuff and give them old IWC shows and have them review it as a podcast. Funny you should say that. <laughs> Do I have I know volunteers? A, I know a guy. I mean, and then you put that, and and again, I'm somebody who's trying to sell something over here, so it actually turns into yeah. a. It actually turns into marketing at that mm -hmm, point. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, the thing I'm, you know, why I'm here. The other, thing, you know, the this begot, this begot, this mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. this job here mm -hmm. is because I'm doing a podcast for these clients. Yeah. 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 You, I mean, like you've mentioned, like, like podcasting for wrestling turned into podcasting for for clients. Right. Right. And I mean, everything begets everything else, and everything turns into another thing. Uh, uh, you know, I am a. I am a Pro Wrestling Illustrated reviewed documentarian and a award winning uh, uh, foundation award winning um, I don't even know what's a producer I guess because we did a show for the Pittsburgh Foundation you know mm -hmm. like like thank you podcasting right <laughs> yeah you know what I mean about yeah. wrestling mm -hmm. ten years ago mm -hmm. and and you know that's and all this and. And the coolest thing about podcasting also is here I am, I just I'm on my second of these trips and I've got to catch up with somebody in each of those towns, you know. Mm -hmm. Um when I went to Tennessee there's the one person I knew again from PodCamp and everything, which is from, you know, podcasting in general. Um and, but then also I was getting um you guys long time listeners may remember Vicky Gambino. Mm. Not that she goes by that now because she definitely doesn't do anything with wrestling anymore right but um she was giving me all these tips I was like check out this place go do this and you know you know this kind of stuff and then and she's like in town and i'm just like this is crazy you were here you know um this other connection that we have going on you know mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. like i want to see how long the street can go <laughs> you know that yeah. we we can do all that stuff i got a thing mm -hmm. coming up that i might be maybe going to Austin for a thing. I don't know. It's really kind of up in the air at yeah. this point. Not, yeah. not confirmed, but still, it's like, like when I go to Austin, I'm like, I know some people down there and that happen to have a wrestling promotion. Yeah, I'll go, you know, and hang out with my friends, mm -hmm. hopefully, you mm -hmm. know, if I have some mm -hmm. time outside of the job, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just taking advantage of all these things, you know, to, you know, uh, um, and, and it's really cool that through all this stuff, like my world is getting smaller, you know? Mm -hmm. And I say that with a smile on my face for you, all mm -hmm. your listeners, like that, you know, I mean, I'm across the country, you know, and yeah. it's just cool. <laughs> yeah. Cole Caban always talks about, it. he thinks it's really awesome that he gets to do this weird wrestling thing and that sends him to, he was just talking about us on like one of the last couple episodes. He's like, yeah, I was supposed to go to Australia again. You guys have been asking about, but I completely had to turn it down. Cause I already had a thing in Irish. Ireland, no, Ireland, sorry, yep. in Ireland. And he's like, it's like how, it, how that, crazy is it how, that I have to turn down a gig in Australia to go to Ireland? Right. Yeah, I remember that episode. That was, yeah. Right. I'm having, like, that's exactly the kind of thing, you know? And, and I'm seeing that, happen like ah oh, i can't 
<laughs> you know, I'm sorry I can't uh, uh, be there to film your wrestling promotion, but all that stuff I did for you got me this job to go out to LA <laughs> for this other thing, you know? Not yeah. that I'm abandoning them. I mean, they're completely... Oh, right. Like, but that turns... Like, for me, that turns into, hey, friends that have been working with me, here's another job for you, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And we get to grow, you know? Because... Again, I've, we've turned this into a business, yeah. you know, and we're going to make this business work, you know. I know, I know it's turned into a whole other thing, you know, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. um, but the business is all stuff that um, I enjoy doing and is stuff that I'm a fan of. And I can write off a raw ticket on the on taxes, I mm -hmm. think. I hope so. <laughs> we'll find out, uh, you know. Um, and that's cool. That's really cool. And that's like, that's the kind of thing you can do. I think any wrestler or any announcer out there is, is, you know, doing that, you know, that, that, you know, some, some, some friends, some of the wrestlers, promoters, whoever that we know, um, I have other friends not quite as deep into the business that kind of run them down. It's like, oh, he's just doing this and, and. He doesn't have a real job, da 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 da, and I'm just like, no, look at what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's making a business out of this, and he's creating himself as a personality, you know, or whoever. And I can name like three people off the top of my head that that entire scenario fits for. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. In, in the wrestling biz, um, God bless them, man. I mean that they can do that. You know, no way. You know, none of them are living in a mansion or anything, or getting a WWE check, but. Mm -hmm they're doing that you know mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. like go get a part time job that is their part time job you yeah. know or that is their job and, and, yeah. and they're in a situation where that is enough for them for whatever reason you know um, it's a day and age in wrestling and in, in life in general you have to make your own job and um, and and that's not it's most true for pro wrestlers Mm -hmm. So I, if, I think if anything else, us as fans, um, hopefully we'll uh, look at that entrepreneurial spirit that they put out mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and build something cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's interesting. Like, you know, wrestling as a business, I think I can't help but think of like independent pro wrestling as like the ultimate freelancing. It is. You know? It is. To the point where there's literally a promotion called freelance wrestling now. <laughs> You, that, well, I'm, I'm like that's just great well if you go on that tip you know um, some of the great minds in entrepreneurism um, talk about how much you have to give it away give it away talk talk for free talk for free mm -hmm. until you're that person that's that that does that thing what are wrestlers doing they're working for next to nothing mm -hmm. and giving away giving away mm -hmm. I'm going to say 20 bucks in a hot dog is not getting paid for it right. in this in this scenario mm -hmm. but again give it away give it away build your name build your name build your name and they start knocking on your door yeah and WWE Ring of Honor TNA New Japan promotions that will pay you more whatever the case is you yep. know and, and that and you see that I don't look at like like Colt and Young Bucks and as as Oh, they're just indie wrestlers. Like, no, they're entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. They're making this work. And that's the hardest freaking thing to do, you know, yeah. especially when you yourself are the brand. Mm -hmm. You know, your character is the brand. You are the brand, whether that's real or fake or what. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I get in trouble when I say fake on any wrestling podcast these days. But, <laughs> but um, and it wasn't even in the same context. Um, but, uh, but I think that's, I think I'm hoping that inspires wrestling fans more than the spectacle. If they're if they're that other jaded wrestling fan that reads the sheets and knows what's going on and all this stuff, like it, I hope if they do that and they rise above being just a fan fan, uh, they take that next step and start kind of seeing the message, mm -hmm. you know, and make cool stuff. I, I think that's. You know, anybody that goes and makes a t-shirt, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you're making something, decides to do a podcast website yeah. and turn it into something more than just, you know, an expression of your fandom, but then your expression of your fandom starts giving back to you, you know, that's, yeah. that's awesome, that's super awesome, and that's yeah. 
the stuff I love about podcasting <laughs> is one of the giant components that can be used for that. So, yeah. Cole Cabana and all these other guys, are like, Cole Cabana is justified that he was right mm-hmm. by Stone Cold and all the other guys doing it. Yeah. I feel justified that Cole Cabana is doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, I can't compete with his interviews. I can't have that interview because mm-hmm. I'm not a wrestler. Yeah. So, also another thing to consider. Yeah. Um, going to start wrapping up now, but, uh, this, you know, again, kind of going back into talking about wrestling as a business, I wanted to touch a little bit on one of my personal favorite things that you've been involved with more recently, uh, IndieWrestling.us, uh, the Indie Wrestling Superstore, as some would call oh, it. Oh, I'm in trouble now. Wait, who's calling it that? Uh, I am. <laughs> uh, right. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. Well, yeah, no, I, I remember, like... Because and I'm part of I'm I'm very much interested in hearing a little bit of history about it simply because I watched an older uh, I think it was IWC or RWA clip from back in the day I think it was and like to give you an idea of how old this was it had like a Digital Horizons uh, watermark on it yeah. and there was a thing on there about going to IndieWrestling.us so that tells me that no no no. So when yeah, okay so is, how, that is not okay so then I'm I'm I don't know what you saw. Kind of weird mashup. Was, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find that clip and, and, and show it to you. But in the meantime, I want to hear about unless, indie wrestling. Unless there was US. a trailer we did that was a best of. Oh, okay. We were using old uh, Digital Horizon stuff. Uh-huh. They have a logo in the corner uh-huh. for a lot of that stuff. So like, and it just carries over. That okay. Could be, that could be. Well, yeah. No. Uh, okay. So in that case, slight reboot on this convers- part of the conversation. <laughs> Where to come from and why? Where did indie wrestling. Us to come from and why? Yes. When I took over, I saw the death of DVDs as imminent. Also, you know how much of a pain in the ass it is to make DVDs when you're just one person? <laughs> All right? So two problems there, right? Yeah. Like digital downloads. iTunes is doing it. Everybody else is doing it. Um, I found a mechanism, and I'm always looking for a new one, and I'm always looking for other ways to do to deliver, right? Mm-hmm. Just more efficiently, right? Because... Again, DVD manufacturing international became a problem. I have sent DVDs to Australia, Denmark, Germany, and a few other places in between. Wow. Japan. Japan was an one, too. They've been out there. And I was like, I knew we could serve people better and get more people to buy the product if we did that. And it's not where I want to be. It's miles from where I want it to be. I want it to be iTunes. Mm-hmm. But without the iTunes problems, right. I want it to be, you know, I want a WWE network mm-hmm. that's international wrestling cartel, you know, I mean, high spots and smart mark are doing this too. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and we have deals with both of them too, for some of our content. So, um, most, mostly IWC, actually a lot of what I have is also on smart mark. Okay. And please uh, go buy on smart mark. I mm-hmm. don't. I don't care where you get it, mm-hmm. and even there's some stuff that's on there that if that isn't, I don't get anything out of if you buy it over there. Yeah, uh, depending on who it is, mm-hmm. um, I don't care. I just want you to find it. I also want to clean up the name of indie wrestling as a website because the .dot com is a part domain that somebody keeps emailing me and wants three thousand dollars for it every few months. Um, the .dot net is. I'm not afraid to say a, a seething cesspool of, of internet messaging that mostly is around the Pittsburgh area mm. and, and is unanimous and it's ugly. It's ugly. It's ugly in soul and, and HTML and, <laughs> <laughs> and that pissed me off, mm-hmm. you know? And I had a couple of different ideas for, and I and just randomly bought IndieWrestling.us and pittsburghwrestling.com, the store for the digital downloads were just a wing of sorgatronmedia.com. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a realization that, because my philosophy had been, I do everything under Sorgatron Media. Look, I'm doing this, look, I'm doing this, look, I'm, this, 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 boom, boom, boom. We're always putting stuff out, mm-hmm. boom, 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 mm-hmm. boom. But then I realized, you know, the weight of the podcasts that were coming out and the wrestling that were coming out meant that the big companies weren't calling to do the stuff that actually paid the bills. Yeah. So there was a branding problem. Mm. 
So that turned into this and that migration that I know you were part of a little bit. No, no, a big chunk of it actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> rephrase that. And um, so that became the site. So now IndiaWrestling.us is the site that holds IWC, Prime Wrestling, uh, RWA, VOW is on there now. Um, and actually, 605 Wrestling gave us a show and they never talked to us again. Uh, uh, the, our friends, Dustin ba- the Dustin Batdorf Invitational mm-hmm. in Ohio that Juice Jennings does. First mm-hmm. three, one, three are on there. They didn't do a video this past year. Um, and it's in our promotion, I'm forgetting. Border, Be- Border City Wrestling mm-hmm. is now a part of it. A lot of this, and, and of course, all the documentaries I've done with Joe Dabrowski, mm-hmm. and a lot, of that, a lot of that I mentioned is actually through Joe Dabrowski, too. Mm-hmm. Dabrowski mm-hmm. too. So now it's becoming more than just Pittsburgh, which I'd like to see because one, mm-hmm. I like to see that the Pittsburgh stuff is out there. I like going to Smart. I just did this like last week. I went to Smart Market Video and I'm looking at the listing and I'm like, yeah, all my friends are on there. You know, not, not, not you know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But no, no, I IWC, RWA, POW, mm-hmm. um, Prime, Judge Dabrowski stuff, mm-hmm. you know, and, and not the, and not a, and I'm not like, it's not, I don't think it's because of me or anything like that, mm-hmm. except for the ones I directly said, hey, will you post my stuff? You know, yeah. post, this is good stuff. I think you'll, you'll do okay. And they do yeah. fine, you know, yeah. I mean, with that. And, uh, uh, but I just liked seeing that the area is represented on there where it wasn't before. Right. You can find Pittsburgh wrestling. There's IWC stuff from like Super Indy 6, like in 2006. Five, seven, oh, wow. something like that. Like, there's a few random things that I don't know who put those up there, right? Um, and now the catalog for the last several years is up there in best ofs. You know, you can buy DVDs of some of uh, a good chunk of the best ofs uh, over high spots. You know, um, that's the mission mm-hmm. more than the financial side. And my my philosophy is if we expose that stuff through all those venues and our own site as a vehicle too um, then everybody will benefit right yeah um, IWC gets out there more IWC gets out there more everybody local comes and buys a ticket uh, we sell more of their stuff and everybody is happy and makes money because I mean in the end that's what it is it's like we're not seems like sometimes but we're not all here just to you know, work mm-hmm. for free, you know, yeah. but, you know, th- this has to be sustainable at some point. And, and, and it's not just, you know, it's bigger. It's providing an opportunity for promotions that maybe you want, aren't on this other thing. It's another venue, you know, to, to put content out on. And I'm working on a few versions of that to make that better. Mm-hmm. Um, always looking at that and always trying to improve the customer service. I personally email back everybody to buy something and say thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I try to notice when it's multiple people and say thank you for continuing to support us. You know, so yeah. it's not. So I don't think I'm a robot. It's co- I am copy and pasting a little bit, but you know, but mm-hmm. but but still, like I just like I still I want them to know there's a person on the other end, and there are problems that crop up because it's a weird way that we're doing digital downloads, right? Yeah. Um, and the system needs work and maybe just a whole new system. I don't know. Um, but in, sometimes I screwed up putting something up, you know, and, yeah. and it's like, cool, sorry, here you go. You know, mm-hmm. and people are responsive to this and not only that, Indie Mayhem becomes a component of that mm-hmm. because we're talking about the people that we are put, you know, that we have on the site. Mm-hmm. So that exposes each side of things. So now something like that podcast is not just something we do as a hobby it's also a mechanism to actually sell something you know which if we sell something over here then that justifies to continue doing the podcast and putting our energy and effort and money into that right right which makes the podcast better Mm -hmm. because it's now supported by this thing Mm -hmm. see i think you know and yeah um i'm practically doing a podcast session here um (laughs) and then we have good friends that really know how to write and around the Indies was born with her mm-hmm. friend Matt Carlins, and it now that becomes now we're kind of a source of information mm-hmm. 
right? And we're, or we're featuring sources of information and there isn't. And the way he does it, he retells it with all the tweets and videos and you know whatever's been posted on Instagrams mm-hmm. um, with embeddables and everything. So it's not just, hey, here's what happened. It's got to be this guy, blah, 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 blah. Oh, by the way, this is that crazy clip of this... This, these two ladies going through a table and inspire a pro from eight different angles. It's like, you know, like, mm-hmm. like, like that kind of stuff. He creates that to the point where we're getting tagged on news stories as a heads up now. Mm-hmm. Um, and great, maybe, you know, people come there and they start hearing about, uh, they came because they saw a story retweeted because we talked about Chikara and then they discovered, um, um, you know, uh, uh, Northeast Wrestling, mm-hmm. you know, or this other crazy promotion they didn't know was in Road the Island right down the road from them, you know. And in the meantime, on the side are all these tweets and updates about whatever IWC, RWA, VOW, etc. thing that, that came out, you know. So now you're just, you know, exposed to all this other stuff and and you know, hopefully they stick around and get our, our thing, mm-hmm. you know, or they keep coming back. Maybe they caught the thing next time they come back, you know. Um, and there's uh, supported by newsletters and social media, and we're trying to do more videos. And as much as we can with the energy that we have, of course, and the bandwidth that we have um, with all the many things we have our hands in. Um, so <laughs> it's not just a story. It's a philosophy, which is how I like to run things like this. Mm-hmm. So... It's awesome. Um, before uh, before we get out of here, uh, I want to go. Let me see if I watch what question you ask next because it could be in our half an hour. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Next question. So, kind of my final question before we we get to the wrap before we wrap up. So, I know like it's funny. We we were talking about the, the episode of Call Cabana where he does like the questions and stuff. And there were a couple of people that asked him, like, what was your favorite interview or moment yeah, or whatever? I need to and he's like, I need to I, that episode. Yeah. And well, it's just funny because he's like, he, he can't answer that kind of thing. So, my question to you, as someone who's been podcasting about wrestling for 10 years, is not what is, it's simply, can you name a favorite moment or interview from 10 years of, of podcasting? I think my favorite moment actually didn't happen on the show. <laughs> and it's the time that. We got a call. We had finished the show. It's when we were in the basement, mm-hmm. where we're at now. And uh, we get a call. I was like, we're coming over. It's like, we, but I guess we can do an se- extra thing. I think it might be in the podcast feed or something to look at. It's, and I don't even know if we, I can't even remember if we even got video of this thing, but it's so burned in my brain. But it was Facade, Jimmy DeMarco, and Shima Zion, and now DJ Z, of course. Thank burr, burr, burr. Yeah, thank you. Um, and they're over I think they they probably had been drinking or something I'm sure they walked I'm, I'm sure they walked um, and and I just remember Shima doing his baby B- Batista entrance <laughs> because Shima's part Filipino oh, okay and so, so is Batista uh-huh. therefore baby Batista <laughs> And he completely, somebody, somebody played the Batista music on their phone, and he comes around the corner from my, from, from my laundry area and just does the Batista entrance pose. And that's what's striking me right now. Like, that sticks in my head for some reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's super weird, you the know? The weirdest and thing ever. Happened. And this guy is like wrestling in Mexico and, and on TV and stuff. But there's that time he was baby Batista in my basement, <laughs> you know, which is still even of all the things, that's a weird phrase in the long run. Yeah. <laughs> that in, and that in meeting wrestling fans' mom. <laughs> I'll just leave that where that's at. <laughs> You're losing it. He's losing it. We oh, lost man. That's so good. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take us out of here on that before we do another half sure. hour. You're flummoxed. You'd be a two-parter, sure. I mean, I mean, you were you were talking about feeling like it was midnight back when it was 9 o'clock. Reminding you of your time zones. We're almost 
getting close to that now. So it's like, uh, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Uh, I want to go ahead and let you, uh, this is a perfect outlet, so get your plugs in. Plugs, all the things, IndieWrestling.us, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. SorgatronMedia.com is sort of the hub for all the things happening. Sorgatron.com. By the way, there are two newsletters. If you go to any of those wrestling sites, there's one, and I think it's still set up that you'll get a free 2009 IWC show featuring AJ Styles, probably Christopher Daniels, and a bunch of other cool people because it was like a crazy anniversary show, like their 100th episode or 100th ish, or geez, 100th show. Um, so all those big names came back except for CM Punk because he was doing other things. Um, and, uh, and, and of course, I have another newsletter where I talk kind of like that weird podcasting and purpose thing that I was just talking about. Like, that, that's what happens over there at Sorgatron.com in that newsletter. Uh, what else do I do? <laughs> Anything else? If you guys have any questions, honestly, if anybody has any questions about, like, podcasting or social media or, or anything like that, I, I can just go on about stuff like that. And, and, and t- twice now I've done that in front of people and that was really, a room's full of people and that was a really cool feeling too. And always weird, but you know, kind of fun. But I, I like doing that and I, I, I will do that forever. You know, I, I think, uh, and, and, and I like seeing people like you, Alex, uh, creating something new out of these and seeing what they can do. Cool, thank you. It's great having Great having you on. It's great uh, hanging out with you here in LA. Still feels honestly, it, it feels weird because this is like the first like in person. Like I mentioned before, this is the first in person interview I've done on this, so that's kind of nice in itself. Uh, yeah, it's good having you on. Thank you for having me. Thanks again to Mike Sorg for a very very fun chat. It was a lot of fun hanging out with him that weekend, and I'm glad that he enjoyed Lucha Underground. Funny enough, if you've been watching Season 3, you might have noticed that we are actually sitting front row right next to Melissa Santos in Episode 3 during the main event as the trio's champions defended their titles against the Worldwide Underground. Be sure to check out everything Sorgatron-related at sorgatronmedia.com. That'll do it for this episode of Occupy Pro Wrestling. Be sure to keep up with the latest news and updates by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at power 2 Marks. That's the number two. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher and wherever else you can find great podcasts. We now have a Patreon page. Support the show and our merchandise by pledging a dollar or more at patreon.com slash occupyprowrestling, and you will get some nice rewards like early access to the show, special bonus content, and a chance for a free t-shirt from our friends at What a Maneuver. Also, if you're doing a lot of shopping at Amazon, be sure to use our banner on the site and help support us while doing all your usual shopping. Until next time, 10 percenters, this is Alex Smiley reminding you to let pro wrestling put a smile on your face. Yeah.